Hi guys, today we're going to simplify radicals with prime division. So this is a fairly easy way to simplify radicals, uh, especially if you don't have a calculator that can just do it for you. Okay. Um, if you do need a calculator for this, for the division part of it, a, a simple basic four function calculator will work. You don't need a big graphing calculator for it. Okay. So when we talk about simplifying radicals with prime division, what we're going to do is we're going to take the radicand. Okay, if you remember your radicand is under the radical symbol. Okay, this is your radical. And if there is a number here, whatever number is here is called your index. Now, the nice thing about simplifying radicals with prime division is that um, you can use this method no matter what the index number is. And the ones that we're going to focus on today are square roots. Um, with square roots, you're not going to see an index number. Uh, but you could take what we've done today and apply that to um, other radicals, cubed roots, quartic roots, um, etc. So I'm actually going to revise this where it says radicals, and I'm going to change this to square roots. That's what we're focusing on today. Okay. I'll do another video later um, where we look at other roots, like your cubed roots and your quartic roots. Okay. First thing we want to do is make sure we know our prime numbers. So because we're doing prime division, we're only dividing by prime numbers. Okay. So we have two. Um, some people include one, but for this, we're not going to include one because when we divide by one, we only get the same number back. So we're not going to worry about that. So two is a prime number. Three is a prime number. Four is composite because I could do two times two to get four. So we're going to skip four. Five is a prime number. Six is composite, but seven is prime. Eight and nine are both composite, and so is 10, but 11 is prime. Okay. And you can kind of go through numbers that way. A few of the other prime numbers, um, 13, 17, 19, and it continues on. There's a whole lot of prime numbers. It's just any number that is only divisible by one and itself. Okay. And just as a little trivia fact, two is your only even prime number. All of your other prime numbers are going to be odd. Okay. So let's look at our first example. Example one we're going to look at the square root of 64. Okay. With prime division, what we're going to do is we're going to take 64 and off to the side here. So I'm going to use a different color. Off to the side here, we're going to take 64 and we're going to divide that by our prime numbers. I always like to start with the lowest prime number and work my way up. Okay. So I always check twos first. Will two go into 64 evenly? If my answer is yes, I divide by two. So two goes into 64 32 times. And then I'm going to do that again. I'm going to check 32. Will two go into 32? And my answer again is yes. Two goes into 32 16 times. And two also goes into 16 eight times. 2 goes into 8 4 times, and 2 goes into 4 2 times. Well, now I'm down to a prime number. I don't need to do any more division. <clears throat> All right. Here's what we're looking for. We're looking for pairs of the prime number, okay? Because I'm looking for a square root, I'm looking for a pair. So a pair of 2s here. We've got a second pair of twos and a third pair of twos. Each of these pairs represents one two, okay? But I'm going to write it under my radical as two squared times two squared 
times 2 squared. Okay? Now, if I'm looking for the square root of a number, and there is a number that is being squared under that square root, then the square root and the square kind of cancel each other out. So really what I have here is 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, when I multiply those together, I get 8. So uh, the square root of 64 is 8. We know if we do 8 times 8, we get 64. That's a, a fairly common uh, square root that's used a lot. Um, it's kind of why I wanted to start with that one. It was a, a square root that we know. So you can kind of see how we get to that. For example, 2. We have the square root of 108. Okay. So again, off to the side, I'm going to take my 108. I'm going to divide by my prime numbers. I'm going to start with 2. 2 goes into 108 54 times. And 2 goes into 54 27 times. Well, 27 is not even. I can't divide by 2 anymore. So now I have to look at my other prime numbers. If I go to 3, which is my next prime number, does 3 go into 27? The answer is yes. 3 goes into 27 9 times. And 3 goes into 9 3 times. Well, now I'm, I've ended on a prime number. Okay? So when I go look for my pairs, I have a pair of twos, I have a pair of threes, and I have this one three that's kind of by itself. Okay. So when I go to rewrite my square root here, it's going to be two squared times three squared times three. And again, the radicals and the squares kind of cancel each other out. So we have two times three that come out of the radical because we undid the square. But this 3 is left by itself. It's not being squared. It didn't have a partner, per se. That one stays under the radical. And I can multiply these two together, the 2 and the 3. I get 6 square root of 3 is my simplified version of the square root of 108. Okay. What happens if, <coughs> excuse me, if we have um, a number that's already outside the radical? Okay. So let's look at a third example real quick. If I have something like 10 times the square root of 147. Okay. Well, I'm going to kind of leave the 10 alone for a little bit. I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and put it out here. You know we're going to rewrite this radical in just a moment. So I'm going to take my 147, and I'm going to start seeing what I can divide into it. 147 is not even. It is an odd number, so I cannot use 2. So I'm going to look at 3. Well, 3 go into 147 evenly? Yes. If I do 3 goes into 14, I get 12. So, well, 3 times 4 is 12, and I'm going to have 2 left over. So 3 goes into 27 9 times, so I get 49. 3 does not go into 49, so we're going to check 5. Because it does not end in a 5 or a 0, 49 is not divisible by 5. So let's check 7. 7 goes into 49 7 times. Okay. And again, 7 is prime. So now that I'm down to a prime number on the bottom, I could stop. The only pair of prime factors I have are those 7s. So when I rewrite my radical, I'm going to have 3 times 7 squared. Okay, the radical and the square cancel each other out. So I've still got this 10 out front, but this 7 is going to come out front too. 
and that 3 has to stay inside. Well, now I'm just going to multiply the 10 times 7 and get 70 square root of 3. Okay. So that's how we simplify square roots using prime division. It is a quick, it can be a quick and easy way um, once you get used to it, once you kind of start going through it. You're not dividing by large numbers. You're only dividing by your small prime numbers. Um, most of your numbers can be broken down and divided by 2, 3, 5, or 7. Occasionally, your first prime number that will divide evenly is going to be 11 or 13. Okay? Um, but just check those and you should be able to, to get find out if they're divisible by a prime number. Um, so that's where I'm going to leave you for today uh, on simplifying square roots with prime division. I did tell you that you could simplify other radicals with prime division. Um, if you're looking for the cubed root of a number, instead of looking for pairs of prime numbers, you're looking for triples of the prime number. If you're looking for the fourth root of a number, then you're looking for a set of four of the same prime number. So um, this prime division can be used with multiple uh, radicals to simplify them. Okay. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later. Have a good day.